All right, YouTube, it's time for another garden update. Everything's going along just fine. You can see the cabbages are starting to pick up the pace. They're doing fairly well this year, um, actually far better than last year. But uh, look at the uh, all the beets, and especially the Swiss chard. This really likes it here this year. Uh, I sort of went through, uh, there are Nicosiana seedlings coming up. I destroyed most of them, but I'm not going to waste time with all of them until they get bigger anyway. Uh, still, it's easier to weed them all out, and I'm going to leave a few here and there in this bed. I just like to have a few flowers. The carrots are doing well back there. You can't really see them yet. They're kind of small and innocuous uh, at this resolution. But take a look here. Uh, the Texas plant is blooming. Again, I have no clue what it is. Sort of like a gothic plant. It's like a deep, deep purple, almost black, which I really like. Um, and it rained. We had quite a bit of rain yesterday, so everything's nice and green. There are beans in there, as you can see. I just sort of put beans in there. I had extras because I got a big packet of them uh, to mix with the corn. And I actually, uh, I, I planted all the corn, but I had too many beans by like 50%. So I ended up putting a bunch there, and I ended up putting a bunch in here too. And I was going to weed that side, but there's actually some sort of, I don't know, there's a whole family of spiders that have made webs over on that side, and I can't actually get in there to weed very easily. So I'm just going to say fuck it and hope that they move on. <clears throat> it's all good. It's not going to hurt anything. The gas plant's finally taken off. This is the first year that it really has. I mean, it's a five-year-old plant or maybe six by now. It's doing really well now. Could have something to do with the fertilizer and the extra soil I plowed in. The oriental poppy is going to be blossoming soon, along with uh, various irises, as you can see. The chamomile's getting ready. You can see this is like a massive chamomile bush right here. It's going to be loaded all year. Um, all the chamomile is doing really, really well. Some of these are getting ready to actually blossom, probably tomorrow. These are the ones that are a little less attractive, I think. Uh, they're more of small white flowers. <clears throat> There's some lettuce in here. You know, it's a little bit sporadic, but I planted more in there, and that's coming up now. That'll fill it in, and it's okay. You don't need too much lettuce, and there are some spinach plants on the other side. Those have actually, I think something got in here and ate some of them down, unfortunately. So I'm probably going to have to re-sow those, find out what was coming in. The lupin is beautiful. It's all uh, happy there, and some lilies actually beginning to blossom as well. Uh, the first few lilies blossoming along with these irises. I can't remember the name, but it's some sort of gothic variety, which is good, because, you know, it's the sort of shit I'm into. I weeded this out more or less today, so you can see the beans and the corn are doing really well. Um, that's, uh, for, for not even being June, that's pretty good, honestly. You can see there's still some weeds in here, but uh, I munched uh, most of them out. Anything that I didn't get, I'll get, you know, in the next week or so, <clears throat> fill it out. I couldn't identify any peppers coming up. I think they got frosted, so I replanted those. I have like nine stands of them. Hopefully those will be fine. They may or may not. But all the perennials are doing well, other than that one catnip in there that keeled over. There's still some witch grass in here. I have to dig it all out, but I'm not too uh, concerned with that. I've already uh, gotten rid of so much of it, and these are all so well established. It's not really necessary at this point. I'm going to break these apart further in the fall, and next year this is going to be absolutely filled with perennials. They're going to be, it's going to be wall to wall as far as the flowers go. Only have a couple catnips in there. I'm glad, this especially, I'm really glad that the uh, poppy came back, but there's an iris attached to it. i got to take care of that at some point, too. You can see little tomato plants here. There's several of them, and some weeds, of course. Um, some of the cucumbers have come up, as you can see, but again, like before, I think some of them got frosted. Some of them came up just fine, others not so much, so I replanted those partially too. And uh, the tomatoes are doing well, and the uh, zucchini, the spaghetti squash are in this row, and then the zucchini are over here. They've all done fine. The uh, spinach that's here is doing pretty well. Again, though, something ate through a few of them and destroyed them. Those that are left are doing just fine. But I filled in the blank spots and put in a third row, so we'll have even more spinach from that. <clears throat> you can see some more, a couple cucumbers growing there. And this is just uh, filling itself in. You know, this was part of the bed uh, a while ago. There are some flowers growing here. I mean, there's sunflowers. There are black-eyed Susans. There are, you know, whatever, another sunflower. Various little plants. There's a horseradish plant growing in the in what's now essentially lawn. 
Um, I may just throw a wildflower mix on here and keep it bare until fall and then you know, put grass seed on it. Some more chamomile. These ones are more leggy than the other. Oh, deer fly trying to get on me. The catnip here is a sad, sad catnip plant. Um, I don't know whether I fucked up the root or whether it was old anyway, and it's just, you know, it's probably not going to make it, but whatever happens, happens. There's some morning glories in here, along with the chamomile, so it'll still look nice. Nothing wrong with it. The hostas are, you can see, completely bushy around the bottom of this plant. And over there again, there's a, in that metal, I'll get as close as I can without touching this spider's web, that's another peach tree actually growing. Uh, and doing pretty well. I fertilized it, I surrounded it. I didn't want it to get munched down, so I put the metal around it in hopes of keeping you know, deer or whatever it is away. It may or may not work, but if that takes off, and then uh, in the fall or next spring, I'll transplant it and we'll actually have a second peach tree, <clears throat> which is what I've wanted for a while. You know, it doesn't raise the odds of actually getting peaches in any given year, but it'll look nice. You know, this peach tree, it's like my favorite tree out here. It has borne fruit twice. Um, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, and, you know, it's got some dead limbs on it, but it looks like an average tree. I'm not, you know, I'm not turning it into a fucking uh, bonsai bush or anything like that, but it's just fine for my purposes. More catnip, more lupin, more irises, more lilies. I put collard greens in this little area, uh, actually this bare spot. There are all sorts of plants coming up here. I'm not even sure what some of these are. I know there's some milkweed in there. You can see that's a milkweed plant. That's good for monarch butterflies. I never remove that. This is, uh, I think that weird bush over there has sprouted five or six little uh, sub bushes. And I'm gonna take those. Those produce beautiful, beautiful flowers. I'm just gonna take them and uh, plant them everywhere because they do so well. There's a uh, vinca vine in there, I believe, along with some violets some other little plants, and a few more lilies, you know, here and there. This one's getting ready to blossom. But those beans, uh, they did well. It's funny, because uh, so often a bean will come up, and it won't really do anything. It'll just be the seed leaves there, and it'll never develop further. It'll just be those, and then it'll sort of die down in the roots. It's really funny. But this is the, the same plant, the bushy thing <clears throat> that I spoke of before. And then here. There are more beets coming up. i got to thin them out a little bit, but uh, I figured I'd put in four extra rows of beets here because I really like beets. Also, I wanted to test the difference between the soil that had cow shit added to it and the, and the soil that just had the compost humus mix added. And I'm trying to apply the same amount of organic fertilizer to see if there's any significant difference. I want to see if it's worth spending a very small amount of extra money on the compost humus mix as opposed to the cow shit. Uh, to plan for next year for root crops because I really want like extra carrots extra beets I really like both of them. Those are some of my favorites and tomatoes Those are the big ones that I want in the garden everything else is kind of secondary other than the corn and that the only reason I even plant the beans I don't really give a shit about beans so much as uh, put them in to restore nitrogen But I mean doesn't that look nice and uniform? You know there's a few bean plants missing and I think like one corn plant didn't come up and that's really all I'll probably, there's still like maybe a dozen beans left, I'll just throw them in wherever anything else didn't come up. And it's fine, I mean, it'll just add even more nitrogen to it, honestly. This little area I haven't weeded out yet, you can see the difference. That's before, and this is after, and so is this. There's still a few weeds there, too. Some sunflowers here, I'm leaving them. The leeks did not come up. I'm not going to bother replanting them. I mean, what purpose do I have for leeks, anyway? I, don't do, I mean, I'm not planting potatoes to make a soup. Also... It's so funny. I'm trying to get over here without stabbing my feet. I actually rammed a stem through my foot at some point and uh, really, really uh, <laughs> almost got infected, but I took care of it. Uh, you can see all these plants with little stringers here. Those are stinging nettles. Uh, brush up against them and you'll almost immediately regret it. But I found the secret to uh, dulling the pain. Just take a handful of dirt and rub it wherever it's affected. Within 10 seconds, it feels like nothing happened. Uh, people talk about, oh, use vinegar, use, you know, whatever. No, seriously, just take dirt and rub it right on it immediately after, and you'll be fine. But I find it funny because there's like this enormous patch of stinging nettles right along the edge here. <clears throat> I took a few of them out to keep them from seeding in the garden. You know, I'll take these ones out too. But if they're over the bank, I don't really give a fuck. Honestly, I, I wouldn't mind if this whole area was stinging nettles. Maybe it'll keep uh, larger animals away from the garden, at least on one side. 
so I don't have a problem with it. You can see there's some more corn and beans here. This this soil wasn't as good, so they're not quite as well developed. At least the beans look a little bit more peaked. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just stepping on the fucking uh, horseradish. I don't really care about them. I just left them there. It's too much work to pull them out. These ones. Uh, I'm going to separate those roots, and I'm going to have this whole triangular area here next year is just going to be a giant chunk of horseradish. I'm going to try to kill off any other horseradish in the garden. Just have one little patch of it. And then I really want to have some asparagus here where the corn and beans are at some point, but I may or may not get around to it. So there's a little garden update. Everything's coming along fine. Actually a lot better than I expected. Uh, this is definitely so far the healthiest garden I've raised. I expect great things from it. You can see the giant unsi unsifted pile of compost over here full of eggshells and everything else. Uh, I gotta turn that over at some point. Munch, munch it up really fine, just blast it all over something. And then I'll take that and I'll put it in the perennial bed because, you know, it's easier to munch your way through the weeds here than where you've got annuals growing. And of course, that's a burdock plant in there. And so is this. I'm gonna keep one of these and kill the other. That's about all.